The Evolution Elite Control can hold up to 40 products in its memory. 10 of those 40 products can be assigned to the buttons at the bottom of the control at any given time. To enter programming, press and hold the P program button for about 3 seconds. Enter the code 123. Next, scroll through the products until you find an open product. Open products are usually indicated by the PROD02, PROD03, etc. The only product on our control that currently has anything programmed to it is product 1. As you can see, it is set to fries. For this example, we are going to program our strips to step P2, or PROD02. Press the right program button one time, and name appears in the display. Use the buttons at the bottom of the display to select the first letter, then advance to the next letter with the P program button. The letters are indicated under each button. For a blank space, use the zero button to find the underscore. Next, we're going to assign a button. For this example, we said that we are going to program strips to button number two. So all we're going to do is press and hold button number two, and then the light is lit above button number two. Once that light is lit, that tells us that now strips is programmed to button number two. It's going to show up there. Press the P program button again, and now enter the cook time. Our temperature is already set to 350 degrees, so we can scroll to the next step. The cook ID is a three-letter abbreviation that appears in the three-digit timer display. For our example, we're going to set this to STP, abbreviation for strips. Alarm 1 and 2 are used to tell the end user that they need to do something like shake a basket or stir. We're not going to use this in this example. If you did want to use this, you just enter the time as it remains on the cook cycle. For example, if we wanted to have a shake programmed in after 30 seconds, I would enter 5 minutes here, as our total cook time is 5 minutes 30 seconds. Then there would be a little alarm, and that would remind the end user, hey, shake the basket. For this example, we're going to leave the quality timer at zero. But the quality timer is a timer that starts counting down as soon as the product is done when the timer is canceled. The quality timer indicates how long the product can be held before it would need to be discarded. For example, some stores may set the quality timer and fries to 7 minutes, which means that if the fries don't sell in 7 minutes, they would need to be discarded. Include and filter count should almost always be set to yes, unless you're cooking something where you'd not want to cross-contaminate oil. For example, if you had a vat dedicated to cooking only fish and you did not want to mix the fish-flavored oil with the other oil in the fryer, this would be the only time to say no. An average load compensation would be set to 10. This is the default of the fryer, and normally you don't have to change this. Load compensation ensures that if I cook a small batch versus a large batch of product, my product comes out to the same doneness. 10 is a normal setting for this. The lower the number, the less load compensation. The higher the number, the greater load compensation. The load compensation reference, usually I recommend that this is set to the set point temperature. This is a standard setting and normally doesn't have to be changed. Full heat is like cook anticipation. 20 seconds is standard for this setting. This means that when a timer started, the fryer will call for heat for the first 20 seconds in anticipation of cold or frozen product being dropped into the oil. 20 seconds is normally set by default. PC factor of 5 degrees Fahrenheit is standard. PC factor stands for pulse control, and this means that the temperature will start to pulse when the temperature of the oil is within 5 degrees of the set point. This prevents temperature overshoot. So now we have added our product and we're ready to exit. Press and hold the P program button to exit. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to lower the control board of the fryer. Push up on the bottom of the control while rotating the control to the downward position as this will keep the control from dropping out of the panel. Pull the menu strip out of the control. Then add your name of the product to the location it's assigned to. In our case, we assign strips to button 2. 
slide the menu strip back into the control, then tilt the control back up to the raise position. Again, make sure to push up on the bottom of the control while rotating. Put the two screws back into the control.